Hello and welcome back. I'm Denny and welcome to my Sin Oasis. Today we're going to go over all things royal. Icing. Please do keep in mind this is my first time working with royal icing, so I will probably make mistakes, but we can always learn from the mistakes that we make, and icing is much more forgiving than we think. As always, to see the full recipe, check out the description. To get started, we will first add all of our ingredients to the bowl and then we will mix it for six minutes in a stand mixer. Before adding your powdered sugar to the bowl, I would recommend sifting it. That'll just ensure that your royal icing is as smooth as possible, but it is not necessary. To store your royal icing, you want to place it in an airtight container and cover it with plastic wrap. You'll then want to push the plastic wrap down so that it's in contact with the entire top of your icing. This will help to prevent any filming or hardening on the top of your royal icing. Once we have our icing mixed, we'll then need to add our food coloring. First, we need to decide how many different colors we would like and separate it out into that many bowls. You cannot use any food coloring that contains any grease or oil. Some of the safe bets that you can use are Americolor or Wilton. Personally, I prefer to use Americolor in my royal icing because it has a nice little squeezer. And since you can't use any grease or oil in your royal icing, if you accidentally have used a toothpick or a spoon or anything that has had any grease or oil on it, um, or any form of residue, and then you mix, put it into the food coloring, then ruin your royal icing. Both of these brands are gel food colorings. Gel food coloring does tend to work the best when you're working with royal icing because it doesn't tend to mess with the consistency quite as much. To demonstrate what happens when any oil or grease gets in contact with your royal icing, I have added some olive oil into some royal icing. As you can see, the icing has gotten lumpy and it's not wanting to emulsify as well as normal. And after it's hardened, it is discolored around the edges and it has not dried as hard as usual. If you also look closely, you can see that underneath the crust on top, it has become almost deflated and its consistency has lost all structure. And the top is just kind of making off. This is not how we want our royal icing to be. Once we've mixed all of our colors into our royal icing, we're then ready to begin mixing our royal icing into the different consistencies that we'll need. We'll use these consistencies in order to achieve different textures and techniques with all of our designs. There are five different consistencies that we'll be mixing today for our royal icing. These are the most common consistencies. Our first three consistencies will be defined by their peaks. If you're unfamiliar with meringues and you don't know what a peak is, peaks are the little point that forms when you press down on a meringue with a spoon or your finger and you pull up quickly. This point will then be the identifier that we use in order to know what consistency the meringue is at. The first consistency that we will be using will be the consistency that our meringue should already be at once we get it colored. This consistency will have a stiff peak. We will use this consistency in order to achieve more detailed aspects of our designs, such as if we want to make rosettes, if we want to have a more 3D and stable effect to our designs, this would be our go-to. Our second consistency of royal icing is represented by our orange color. This royal icing consistency has a medium peak and it is still a more stable consistency, but it is slightly softer and we can use it for some of our less intricate designs that we still would like to have a bit of a pop-up effect, such as leaves or grass. Our yellow royal icing represents our third consistency. This consistency 
consistency should still maintain its shape when you place it on the plate and not spread, and it should have soft peaks. The texture of it should be very similar to toothpaste, and we will use this in order to outline our cookies before flooding them. It's also great to use when you're adding details on top of dry royal icing to get that nice layer effect. Our final two consistencies are the textures most commonly thought of when thinking about royal icing. Both of these consistencies will be identified by the amount of time that it takes for them to redisperse into a bowl and attain a nice smooth finish once they're drizzled off of a spoon. The green represents our 20 second icing. This icing gets its name because it should take about 20 seconds for it to redisperse and attain that nice smooth finish. This consistency is great to use when flooding a smaller area on cookies or in order to attain thinner details when you're layering your icings. Our fifth and final consistency is represented by our purple icing here. Just as with the green, the purple gets its name from the amount of time that it takes to disperse. This is our 10 to 12 second icing or flood icing. As already described, it should take about 10 to 12 seconds to disperse and attain a smooth finish. And as of the name, we will use this to flood our cookies you can use it to layer on top of dried royal icing as well. This icing is a little bit more difficult to get to maintain its shape, so you won't want to use it for anything that's too detailed. In order to attain your desired consistencies, you'll just need to spray some water in your royal icing mixtures and then mix it up. I recommend only using a spray bottle to assure that you don't add too much water. When you're ready to begin decorating your cookies, then you're going to need to put your royal icing into piping bags. If you don't have any piping bags available, then you are able to use plastic bags. Um, they don't tend to work quite as well, and you don't have quite as much control over that AC. However, it is still an option. If you are using a piping bag, then you have three different options of how. The first is to just use a regular piping bag to put on your tape scissors and cut just a small hole in the tip once you have it filled with royal icing. Uh, the second is if you want to have a little bit more control over the shape of the royal icing, you want to cut it out of it. Then you will need to put your tip inside the bag before you put any royal icing. You'll cut a hole large enough so that the end of the tip comes through and lays nicely against the, the metal. This will give you more control over the design of the royal icing when it comes out of the bag. However, you are going to only be able to use this one tip if you do put it inside of the bag. And then you would have to entirely switch bags if you wanted to change your tip or if you wanted to change the color that your tip was on. The next option that we have is the option that I'll be using today. This will just give me more flexibility and will allow me to more easily shift the colors and Now that we have all of our icing and piping bags, we're ready to decorate our cookies. So now I'll just take a moment to go over a few basic techniques that you can use in order to create several different designs. In order to ensure that there is no leftover butter or grease residue on the top of your cookie after baking, I would recommend allowing your cookies to lay out uncovered overnight, just to ensure you have a nice, clean finish to put your royal icing. Whenever you are wanting to put a base layer of frosting on, you'll first want to outline it with your outline consistency and then fill it with flood icing. 
don't worry if you have any gaps or if it doesn't quite fill all the way because you can always take a toothpick and just push the icing around a little bit before it dries. You'll then want to allow your royal icing to harden completely before adding anything on top of it. To add the stem and leaves, I have used some medium pink frosting so that I can get some detail, but it still leaves the frosting a little bit softer and lies flatter on the cookie. To add details on top of dried royal icing, I will be using outlining consistency, and I'm just be placing it right on top. As you can see, I messed up slightly, so I just corrected it with a toothpick. For the next technique, I want a little bit more of a 3D effect, so I added a base layer of outline consistency and then flooded over top of it. After allowing the royal icing to dry, I then created the outline of the ears and then flooded them. This will give a nice, distinct line between the face and the ears, as it was done at different times. If I had done it at the same time, they would have bled together and there would not be this nice distinct line that you can see. For the eyes, I used green 20 second icing before immediately placing 10 second black icing in the center. This will ensure that they are on the same layer and that they merge together. As you can see, the eyes are beginning to bleed together, meaning that I should have used a thicker consistency icing, but we all learn from our mistakes. I then used a toothpick to add some little flecks of white in the black of the eye in order to make it appear as if a small glimmer was in the eye. To add cute little cheeks, I used some outline consistency white and then took the toothpicks and created a little whisker outline. To fill the center of the ears, I used some flood consistency pink. I then also use this flood consistency to create a little nose above the whiskers. For a fun effect, I took some pink luster dust or pearl dust and put it on a soft bristled brush and just kind of put some little pink rosy cheeks on my bunny. I then used some purple stiff consistency icing to create a rosette. I did this by using a star piping tip, squeezing a little bit in the center and then letting up as I created a tight circle then use some medium peak consistency royal icing to create the leaves with a leaf tip. For the mouth, I used some 20 second black royal icing, and then I again use this for the whiskers. If I had markers available, then I could have used those and they probably would have looked a little nicer, but since I use buttercream, I don't really have any on hand. You can then use the outline and flood to fill any cookies that you'd like and then create fun designs. I used some green and purple stripes to create a fun effect on my eggs. As you can see, I then took a toothpick and drew through them to give just a fun little decorative effect. I messed up a little bit, so I just corrected it. You can play with this as much as you like. The most important things to remember is that if you add any wet royal icing on top of wet royal icing, it will merge and bleed together. So if you want to create any 3D effects or if you want to layer your royal icing, you'll always want to make sure that you allow the first base of royal icing to dry before adding any icing on top of it. These are some of the most basic techniques that you can use to create several designs using royal icing. You can also look up different de designs or you can create your own. Always remember to have fun and that royal icing is much more forgiving than you think. Thank you for joining me on my first ever royal icing journey and remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell.